yes, schools have started uh, some movements in, uh, in building gardens at their schools, but we can do way better than that. Um, I still see a lot of land by schools completely sitting there. And let's not come up with excuses that we say, well, you know, we have to build a fence. Fence can be built. Uh, what do we do in the summer? You hire an, or hire, you ask a local garden club uh, to maintain the garden in the two months that uh, the students are not at school. Because in September, when the school starts, you know, you could have fantastic food in the school, in the lunch programs, straight from the garden. That's one thing we did. Um, then we, of course, we did uh, the island on the edge, and that is really an, an and a wonderful time, I think, and, and, and uh, I did it with Jason Fount and, uh, and Don Genova. We wrote a script. Uh, we said now, you know, we can try to get funding. What is very, very difficult at this time, especially in an economic crisis where we are, um, because it's, it's, it's difficult to get funding. So we said, okay, let's do it. We have all the equipment. We have the editing equipment. So Jason, Don and I put this documentary together and like I told you, we have shown it uh, 29 times. What we would like to do with it is to create awareness with it, to create awareness about our food, um, to have dialogue, to have discussions going. So after each uh, time that we show it, um, you know, we talk about um, the issues of the day. And then we brought that you know, to the panels and we hope um, you know, I have an MP in, um, in uh, Duncan who is great, uh, Jean Crowder. But again, Jean is of course, um, you know, by herself there. Uh, she cannot change the entire, um, you know, people around her. But at least by talking to her and by showing her, uh, she brings certain issues to the table. Um, I'd like you to also, you know, um, it's... It's really hard because television um, is so difficult at this moment to see what is, um, what is, and I think you're probably gonna hear more about it, what is real and what is not real. Television has become even the news. I tell you a little story when, um, uh, when BBC started uh, broadcasting. Um, one of the first BBC broadcast uh, news was about uh, 15 minutes long and after about 15 minutes the screen went to and I don't know like uh, the young people under us will absolutely not remember that because I, I've never seen a test screen anymore but from the older people like me uh, we had test screens it was you know like uh, all kinds of stuff and uh, after 15 minutes the, the news reader was done and um, it went to test screen this is a true story and people looked 50 minutes until the next program started. There was no news anymore. He said, this is the news. Today, if you watch the news, it's entertainment. News has nothing to do with news anymore. Um, in defense of CBC News, I think uh, The National is still a, a great newscast. BBC is still good. But they are even under pressure. You start to see now stories that are <coughs> entertainment. And one of my favorite ones is what becomes completely entertainment is um, when uh, they go out and uh, there is a storm coming you know we have all these tornadoes coming to the coast in uh, florida and already a week ahead we're standing on uh, in you know when television started they would say we're expecting a storm and it will be arriving six days from now or whatever now we're having people standing on the beach and saying no looking behind me it's not happening yet you see people surfing you see people swimming <laughs> Um, and then they went really that crazy to actually, I don't know if, if you have seen it, uh, it's probably somewhere on YouTube. I think it was a CNN reporter that literally stayed, everybody is told to leave. No, 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 we're staying because we have to cover the storm. Of course, why should you listen to the authorities and you know, stay? So this guy literally stood on the beach and he says, no, and of course now it's howling. It's like, it's absolutely, the wind is circling around him. And the wind picked him up in his middle of the interview and <laughs> picked him up and smashed him against a tree. Uh, my wife said, oh, poor guy. I said, right on, Storm. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. You, this guy deserves it. Like, we're, you know, what is this? This is not news, right? And that's, I think, instead of spending time on real news stories, 
we're spending time on constant entertainment. We, we listen everything about, uh, you know, like, and, and, and I go off the topic again, like another small example is um, the Ayatollah in Iran must have loved it that Michael Jackson died. I don't know if you know what was happening, but we all probably know what was happening. Iran is in an absolute uproar. The people stand up in their country. They want to defeat. And now the world is attention to Iran. Internet is helping and etc. And here Michael Jackson dies. Iran went straight off the television, uh, straight off the newspapers, and Michael Jackson became the story. And I'm sorry to say, um, you know, might be a nice guy, might be a good singer, uh, but uh, why did that story leave? And you see, I think there was a great cartoon in the Global Mail about, uh, about this, why the Ayatollah says, way to go, right? Um, commercials. Please um, look at the commercials. You've been constantly manipulated. Uh, don't see it uh, these days anymore, but McCain's Potatoes. It looks like an, um, a little TV cooking show where this lady comes and she says, oh, today we're gonna cook like this and this and this. And then uh, it's, she's making French fries because the French fries is so good, you know, like it's, wow, it's baked. Like, you know, we, we bake the French fries, so it's way better. Um, Basel, I told your story about it. And then you get uh, the health reports. Uh, oh my goodness, like I tell you, Dr. Bob, uh, don't know if he's still on. Those things are paid. Those things are paid by the pharmaceutical companies, the food companies, they are paid advertisements. And at this moment, we cannot even see uh, the difference anymore between paid advertisement and, and what is real. And this is really becoming a huge problem. Of course, um, now the, the advertisers, and we did it in our Next Rate Chef, we uh, brought the product in the show. Uh, so, you know, we did it on a, on, a, on a, you know, a very soft sell, but you see at this moment, and just look at films and television, products are all over the place. Um, you know, one of the shows that I'm started watching, and I think it's already a couple of years old, it's uh, Mad Men. It's about the advertisement agencies in the 60s. Um, the tobacco companies are absolutely involved in this show. Now, I know, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid from the 60s, uh, they smoke like crazy, right? And the tobacco <laughs> companies must just love it because, uh, of course, they try to portray the 60s, um, you know, and, and they do it in the show. But they also bring in all kinds of products because it's about an advertisement agency. Okay, uh, what, can we, what else can we do? Um, I got this question a lot of times and I will open it for questions in a moment. Um, when you're like people say nick you are lucky you have a three acre property um first of all if you have a lawn uh rip it up and build some boxes in there and start growing your own vegetables you know absolutely everybody can do it and please don't use the excuse of saying from it's too much work it's good for you um it's very healthy um you are constantly uh, in movement um you know and it's wonderful to be out there I can tell you there's nothing nicer. And to see things grow. I am still, uh, you know, I am still amazed. Uh, we compost everything in our place. And I'm amazed that a year later, this is beautiful compost that I'm gonna spread out. And I said, what happened with the oyster shells? What happened with this? What happened with that? And it's fantastic to see that. Now you say, okay, I'm living on a small uh, apartment. I have just a little balcony. Go in square foot gardening. Go to the web, uh, find um, square foot gardening, if you type it in, and you see all kinds of ideas how you can actually garden on very small boxes and uh, you don't have weeds and, and the whole works. Um, you know, so no excuse, everybody can do gardening. Start early. Uh, we do um, our tomatoes, we start already in uh, early um, February, uh, all from seed. Everything in our farm comes from seed. Uh, and it's wonderful. We find these heritage varieties. Um, you know, sometimes we keep off, I'm now in the process of keeping seeds from, from last year. And it's amazing because sometimes you, you plant a seed and it was last year, it was, uh, let's say a Romano, uh, a Romano potato, uh, tomatoes. And this year it could be a completely different tomato. What's, what's you know, kind of fun. So it's uh, kind of an, um, uh, it's 
like experimenting with it too.